This is actually one of the things I've been talking about with people a lot when it comes to horror projects is that going kind of meta is the new is like the the most is is the thing that you see the most right now. Um, you obviously have done a lot of kind of straight horror in your career. What made you think like, oh, I want to kind of tackle this kind of in outside the box uh, take on it? You know, it was actually Dale's idea. I've been pitching Vertigo for a few years, and. Um my concepts were just too complicated and, you know, which is fine because I turned them into novels instead. Mm -hmm. But Dale came to me the one day and he said, um, you know, he just watched Child's Play. And he started thinking about what happens to those kids after the, after the credits roll. And he said he'd been thinking about that as a comics idea and I said, that's brilliant, that's amazing. I pitched it to Shelley Bond of Vertigo, she absolutely loved it. But I think we're both really old school horror fans. Um, and it was, it was about taking the conventions and twisting them, subverting the tropes. I think what we wanted to do is, you know, we wanted to pull the rug out from under your feet and you look down and you realize that the rug is made of human hair and flesh and those aren't your feet. So we really wanted to play with a genre that we loved, bring all of them together, do the mashup, um, but do it in a way that there are rules to the universe, that it does make sense, that everything holds together. You know, meta is fine and a knowing wink is also great. But I like my stories to be stories rather than stories about storytelling. Now, that said, like the way it's described kind of in the press materials is it's almost kind of specifically about like those 80s era yeah. kind of stories. Was there a reason, like when you were coming up with it, was there a reason that you gravitated towards that specific era? Is it just, hey, we can make another one in 10 years? No, no. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, we're both horror fans and we're also kids of the 80s, so it just seemed like it's the thing that we knew the most about. But also, um, I mean, horror had some kind of peak in the 80s. Um, so it's a really uh, fun um, source material to draw on. And everyone thinks they know those stories. It's almost like our generation's fairy tales. So it's really fun to play with what people expect to happen versus what happens in Survivor's Club. With, uh, with something like this, are you guys going to have kind of recurring uh, you know, monsters, essentially? Because when I think of the 80s, I think that there was a, a spread of those slasher movies where it was very personality driven, yeah. which obviously, since those are trademarked, it's a little bit odder. No, definitely. Well, we're not, we're not playing with any of the real movies. We're creating our own monsters, we're creating our own, and each of the characters has their own monster and all of them play off different tropes. So, you know, we've got Jay Har, we've got the young woman with a thing on her back with long hair. Um, our slasher genre, we actually have a really horrendous imaginary friend called Mr. Empty. Um, and he's a little bit slender man and a little bit classic, uh, you know, Jason Voorhees or Freddy Krueger. So we're, we're riffing off those things and creating our own original. Um, but what's exciting is putting all of them together. You know, it's not just, it's not just Freddy versus Jason, it's Freddy versus Amityville. You know, it's, and to be able to have the haunted house go up against the serial killer is really, really interesting and exciting to play with. But of course, it's also about the characters' personal monsters and their own demons and the things that they're dealing with. No, totally. Um, as you're putting this thing together, how did the, the creative team come fully together? How did you bring the artist on board? Was that editorial or you guys? Shelley Bond. <laughs> Shelley Bond. She's an amazing editor. Um, she assembled. Uh, how do you describe it? We're like the horror of Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, she just found all these amazing, amazing people. Um, uh, Ryan Kelly, Ava de, Ava de, Ava de la Cruz, Clem Robbins, Bill uh, Sinkovitz on covers. On covers. Um, yeah, she just assembled this like amazing team of people and we all complement, all our styles complement each other so well. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with like every single person. Now, what does the... What's the scripting process look like? Do you guys go in with full script or do you riff off? Because, I mean, obviously horror is a very visual yes. uh, genre. So, uh, Dale comes around to my house um, and it means I can avoid writing my novels and I can do this instead. Um, and he describes it as being like creepy playtime. So we sit and we talk through, um, you know, our, our synopsis and what needs to happen in this issue. And then we look at... Um, working out the breaks and the beats and uh, then we write, then we get Shelly to approve that. Uh, Ryan has some feedback as well if he wants as our artist and be like no we're, I'm not drawing that that's insane or oh I can't wait to draw that that sounds insane um, and yeah and then, then we write it out uh, it goes through a series of approvals um, it's it's quite a long process and uh, and I think it's very interesting for Dale in particular because he's normally an illustrator in his day job 
So, uh, yeah, but it's fun. It's super fun. I love the collaboration. So is this one of these things where you find yourself resisting the urge to pepper the script with little thumbnails? Like, no, do it that way, do it that way. <laughs> um, no, not really. Um, uh, Ryan is far better than I could ever be. So I realized that early on, because uh, uh, when we first came up with the idea, um, Lauren was like, you should totally draw this. And I was like, oh, I, I don't know. I mean, um, I'm very good at drawing like once or very detailed illustrations for book covers. And then we start working with Ryan. I was like, no way, no, no way I can do this. So I, I, I don't even try and insult him by uh, drawing things for him. Um, I, I just kind of, uh, Ryan is very good at interpreting what we come up with um, in, in unexpected ways. So it's very exciting. I'm getting, I'm getting the wrap-up vibe here, so I'm going to... Uh, the question I've been asking everybody, because, of course, a lot of these projects are in the gestational phases, I haven't seen an issue yet. Uh, is there anything that you guys really wanted to communicate about the book that I haven't given you a chance to say yet? I don't know if we've covered the high concept. Um, That's true. I kind of assumed everybody knew it going yeah, in. Why don't you all right. uh, give us the elevator pitch? So, Survivor's Club is a book where we imagined what if the 80s horror movies were real and where are those kids today? And it's six strangers who have all survived horrifying things that happened to them when they were kids in 1987. Uh, ripping off the haunted house, or J-horror, or the slasher, possession, um, creepy imaginary friends. And they all come together in Los Angeles, drawn together by a killer video game. And uh, with, a, with a concept like that, one of the things that's interesting to me about this is you, when you have these characters drawn together by the internet, um, it almost makes it inherently more grounded and believable than something like it, where it's like you have to call everybody from you and like meet at a diner someplace. Yeah. Um, was that just something that was a no-brainer, or was that something where you intentionally wanted to subvert the kind of the the '80s reunion scene? I think we were playing more of kind of house at Haunted Hill. You know, the first the first opening scene. Well, the, the opening issue. They all do have to come together and like find out about each other. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we live, we live in the internet. Uh, we, we needed to bring all of that in. And, you know, we are dealing with cell phones, we're dealing with the internet, it makes it much harder. It means that we have to really think about how big things can blow up. Because if it does get out, it's gonna be online, it's gonna be on Atlas Obscura, it's gonna be on all these crazy sites. Um, and yeah, so we're constantly thinking about that. But it just, if we're not addressing the way the world is now in our work, I don't think it's that interesting. 